So monitoring is a pretty much common thing, especially if we talk about some companies, big businesses, offices, some home labs, whatever. Many people do monitoring, but the boring part of all of that is that usually when we talk about a monitoring, it's pretty much a common thing. It's like, yeah, we're doing that to monitor Windows servers or perhaps Linux servers, um, network devices, databases, applications, whatever. And all of that Zabbix can also handle easily, right? But it's always interesting to talk about those not so common use cases of the monitoring and use cases of the Zabbix. So that's the main purpose of this video. I'm going to tell you one story that I personally know, and it's like not a big secret. It was basically it was used in the Zabbix presentations when when Zabbix tell about the all sort of different use cases that you can do with the monitoring and with the Zabbix. And I'll we'll try to drill down like how exactly that could be possible if you're going to like that based on analytics of the videos and the comments in the section. So go on in a the comment, then I promise we're going to create some more videos of this niche of some interesting use cases of this Zabbix. So what we're actually going to be talking about is the monitoring of the stores in the malls, right? Like I Google the stuff and this is a typical mall that you can find in uh, any cities, any countries, right? It's a huge building with a lot of smaller stores. And how can you, can you imagine like what exactly can be monitored in all of these stores, what would make so much sense but what would definitely not be like a first idea when again you talk about the it monitoring and no i'm not talking about like um, i don't know servers or the computers that might be present in the stores i'm actually talking something that makes sense in a scale especially like if we talk like i don't know aldo in this case it's just an example how many stores they actually have in country in all the countries in all the regions a lot right and making sure that all of those function good as it should be above the baseline let's say it's not that easy especially if we talk about amount of the people visiting the store which is the main component of store generating the money for the company which is the main drive of all this logic right so how do you think would it be possible to actually monitor how many people you have in the store across the day and well the answer is yes if if i would say no then there would not be any purpose out for this video right and uh, why is that important so the real use case the real story from the live uh, live story and i don't know like the exact company and it's really not important but there was one store one of these in in the mall right which were using the zabbix to monitor how many people are visiting the store and suddenly in a headquarters where there's actually the Zabbix server with all of the dashboards you see that there's I don't know it could be a trigger it, it could be a graph on a dashboard but most likely a trigger when the visitors amount of the visitors in the store dropped like two or three times and that's pretty much visible when you don't have a monitoring it's easy to miss that when you do you see the line and if you do the monitoring like for years pretty much the baseline is more or less the same and then suddenly it drops so common sense something happened right because it's not a usual story and long story short some responsible people went to that store where perhaps they just called someone who were actually working in the store and asked like hey what happened why is there are like three times less visitors to our store suddenly since Monday. And the response was might be shocking, but uh, might be also obvious. So what happened is actually if let's say there's their store is this one on the screen, there was some construction on a site, not within the store, but somewhere nearby. And it was occupied with a lot of like warning sites and, and some um i don't know some fences or something to just put around the construction right which was basically just blocking the visibility of the store store itself and pretty straightforward the people were just passing by somewhere let's say here and due to here being a lot of section of the construction they simply missed that and uh, well the solution to the problem was pretty like I don't know, simple in a way, right? They just put some additional sign or, or some 
I don't know, whatever, basically saying that, hey, we're still open and arrow to the doors and what was visible that, okay, perhaps it did not return like to the previous state of amount of the people visiting the store, but it definitely increased comparing to what it was before putting that sign. So that's just one store out of thousands that you might have across the country, different countries, regions, whatever. And uh, having this very simple thing can definitely help you to not lose a lot of the money because of these simple things that otherwise would be simply ignored. And now let's talk about how can this actually be implemented. And by the way, I wanted to let you know something. Do you recognize this, which is usually standing right here? The problem is that I always had that it actually has to be powered, right? And I didn't want to have this white wire going downstairs to the actual electricity plug and happily for me I received uh, basically a present from the Canyon Gaming they send me a chair and also they send me this power bank which my camera unfortunately doesn't focus great but the fact is that it's 27,000 capacity and it just works great for my pixel display and what's charming about it is display obviously that's super cool you can see like the percentage and how much the power output is actually is how much hours it is left based on the currently using power output and uh, the good thing it is power enough to actually charge your laptops which is something i'm definitely going to use whenever i'm going somewhere outside with a laptop and requiring to have longer battery life this is going to be a big saver and now back to the video Technically, well, very simple. On top of everything, obviously, we need to have the Zabbix server. And I'm not going to tell you like how you can install the Zabbix server. You can use the Zabbix cloud packages, install it on any preference of operating system distribution, right? But uh, I already have tutorials about that. And so let's say we have a headquarters with a Zabbix, which is uh, pretty much common. But how to monitor all of those separate stores? And I don't know like all the details of the story that I told you. I just know that it happened, that I can tell you for sure, but I'm not aware of all the infrastructure and environment. But if someone would ask me like, hey, we have thousands of the stores across the country, which we want to monitor, what would be the best way? I would definitely say to install the proxy in each of the stores. Why? pretty obvious you want to have centralized monitoring despite the fact of having like thousand servers you want to have just one Zabbix server sitting in your office which is able to monitor all of those thousands proxies simultaneously and you can update the configuration from your headquarters so the proxy makes sense okay but where should we install it do we need to purchase some sort of like big server and put it behind a shelf not necessarily, especially if we're talking about like, hey, we also have this crazy requirement. Is it possible to count how many people do we have entering our stores? And this might become tricky because I would say there are like two ways how you can do that. One thing is sort of the most reliable, not the easiest one, is a camera. And CCTV might be already present on a store or not. We don't know that. And that's why I did put this a bit aside, because at least in the place where I'm from, you cannot just simply put in the camera in some place and start recording the people. You need to, some approvals from all sort of different compliances that, okay, you are allowed and you need to put the um some message saying that you will be recorded and stuff like that so this might not be legally possible in all of the cases but other than that when you have the video stream there are some applications that are capable to do that like automatically if you have cctv with some system which already like delivers uh, security and all that stuff and if not there are also a different tools that are capable based on the video stream differentiate how many people there are actually in the store how many people there are in the picture, which not necessarily will capture the whole store, but at least if it's an entrance, then you can measure how many goes in and how many goes out. Yes, of course, it might not be the super precise story, right? Someone, I know, so an employee of the store might go out and go back in, but the average will still be the same. And the second story is... 
I did, I, as I said, like I didn't like this because of the compliance to actually record, but this is ESP32 cam Wi-Fi model, which could be suitable for Raspberry Pi as example. And um, it also has a Wi-Fi. So basically everything is there. And this is a little camera which can film and record in a low quality and we don't care about a quality in this case we just care about seeing how many persons are in the store but what i like more is the infrared break beam sensor which you can purchase here on amazon and i will drop the links in the description as well but how this works well let's say we have a door right the main door where people are coming inside our store and we have the infrared break beam sensor which is just just beaming the light the infrared right from one side of the door to the other one and when that breaks and when it breaks when someone crosses it you can configure it programmatically in raspberry pi itself like how frequent should be the interface just to make sure that you comply with the fact that all of us most of us have two legs right so technically those going to be two breaks of the beam but we still need to count one person and don't forget that everyone goes in and then they come out so we need to divide that with a two but technically this costs 672 this can be pretty much easily connected to the raspberry pi and how to do like all the scripting logic well chat gpt will certainly be the saver because it's pretty much not so complicated as you might think. So I've already mentioned multiple times the Raspberry Pi thing, right? And uh, that's something you can also purchase pretty cheap, $159, 159 plus 672. Let's add on top, like, I don't know, 500 for someone who will actually come to the store and put everything together and perhaps even write the code for the Raspberry Pi to do all the uh, capturing from the infrared sensor of how many persons walked into the store. And then we have the Raspberry Pi, we have the proxy, which we can install on the Raspberry Pi, because if we go here, Zabbix 7.0 LTS, uh, Raspberry Pi operating system, latest one, 12 proxy, SQLite will going to be more um, lightweight solution. So you can install that on the Raspberry Pi. And there you go. You basically have everything to start monitoring how many people you have in your store. As I said, like it's not 100% reliable, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> And since you already have the Raspberry Pi with a proxy and, and Zabbix and monitoring, you can additionally, basically free of charge, monitor everything else that is located in the store, including computers, servers, if there are any, some security stuff, everything that can be attached like to the your Raspberry Pi using the Wi-Fi, maybe the Bluetooth, maybe the physical wire. But it, if it can be attached to the Raspberry, then most likely it can be monitored. If it can be monitored, you can monitor it with the Zabbix and trigger some alerts uh, in headquarters. Perhaps you want to co monitor the quality of the air, like CO2 in the store. It, it is pretty important. Like no visitor will want to spend a lot of the time in the place which has just stuffy air right all of them will want to get out maybe you want to monitor the temperature in the store because also like if it's summer and if it's too hot most likely people want to go out so this is just one crazy but simple story of not the usual use case on how you can monitor your stuff which is not the typical network devices, Windows, Linux servers, databases, right? So let me know, let me know what you think. And by the way, if you do have also some interesting use case stories from yourself, please let me know in the comments and uh, I will try to dig through them and try to understand how that actually can work in reality. Other than that, all the links in the description and in the comments. So thank you guys for watching. See you later. Bye bye.